the Plymouth Colony Saga told by the women who lived it, by the Central Texas Mayflower Colony of the Texas Society of Mayflower Descendants. Videos in the series include the wives of colony leaders Alice Carpenter Southworth Bradford, wife of Edward Southworth and Governor William Bradford, Susanna Jackson White Winslow, wife of William White and Edward Winslow in two parts, and Mary Brewster, wife of William Brewster. Wives of prominent couples, Elizabeth Tilly Howland, wife of John Howland, Priscilla Mullen Alden, wife of John Alden, Sarah Warren Cook, wife of John Cook, and Elizabeth Fisher Hopkins, wife of Stephen Hopkins. Introducing Mary Brewster, presented by Kay Benson. The Central Texas Colony Music Chair. Good day, my name is Mary Brewster and I am the wife of William Brewster. William was born in Scrooby Manor in 1564. The manor was used for hundreds of years as the palace of the Archbishops of York. William inherited the position of bailiff of the Archbishops estate from his father, also called William. Both my William and his friend William Bradford from nearby Austerfield House were very concerned that the Church of England appeared to be engaged in practices that were not in accordance with the Christian Bible. Many Puritans across the country had reached this belief and were working within the church to bring it closer to the Bible. Two friends were attending a church where the Reverend Richard Clifton was preaching. Mr. Reverend Clifton was a Puritan who wanted to simplify the services of the Church of England, and his unorthodox views caused the bishop to dismiss him. After that, my husband permitted Reverend Clifton to hold meetings of the Scrooby Separatist congregation at the manor house. This put my William at odds with the bishop and put us in a precarious position with the Church of England. And in 1604, introduced 141 canon laws that declared that anyone rejecting the practices of the Church of England would be excommunicated. Members of the Scrooby group were detained by authorities and fined by the local ecclesiastical court for their beliefs. In 1607, William was fined a large amount of money, but refused to pay it the fine. While the congregation originally wanted to reform the church, we now felt it could not be saved and wanted to separate from it. We were in danger of being arrested and being made, we started to make plans to leave and go to the Netherlands where there were separatist congregations already. It seemed a simple plan at first since William had been in the Netherlands before. William had studied before we were married at Peterhouse, the oldest college of the Cambridge University, and made friends there and who later stood by him. He was known for his intellect and ability to work with people and seemed destined for work in diplomacy. In 1584, at the age of 20, William entered the service of William Davison secretary to Queen Elizabeth and a noted Puritan. He was the, in this position when we got married in 1585. At that time, Davison was ambassador to the Netherlands and William joined him there. Davison was involved by the Queen of England in a scandal involving Mary, Queen of Scots, who was beheaded in 1587. He was imprisoned in the Tower of London and beheaded in 1608. William returned home to Scrooby after Davison was arrested and became postmaster, but we knew his strong support 
of the Puritan separatist cause made life dangerous. William found that he did have friends, but enemies were everywhere. Our first attempt to leave England in 1607 with the children failed. We were arrested and many of William's separatist followers, since it, since it was illegal to leave England without permission. This was very frightening for me, for our children. Our oldest son, Jonathan, was 14 old, years old at the time, and our daughter, Patience, was seven, and our daughter, Fear, was a baby. The next year, we carefully made another better planned attempt to escape Holland with the help of friends and were successful. Once in Holland, William was able to work teaching English to the Leiden University students. We were among friends and felt safe. This was a good time for us. In 1609, William became elder for the congregation of the separatists past, and the pastor, John Robinson, in Amsterdam. Our son, Love, was born in 1611, and Wrestling was born in 1614. William, however, became even more adamant in his separatist beliefs and determined to effect change at the highest levels in England. He and Thomas Brewer set up a secret printing press operation in Holland and began printing separatist religious pamphlets and books for the distribution in England when they were forbidden. The English King James had agents everywhere, even in Holland, and this activity was quite dangerous. The children and I were very concerned for him, but William had friends who shared his strong beliefs and helped shield him. In 1619, William and Edward Winslow wrote a religious booklet that was critical of the English king and his bishops. William and Thomas Brewer published it and with the help of sympathetic friends smuggled the copies into Scotland in a wine barrel aboard a ship. The booklets greatly offended King James who ordered their arrest. The king's agents in Holland came to seize them. The printing type was seized and Thomas Brewer was arrested, but again, with the help of loyal friends, William managed to escape and was well hidden from the agents of the king. The children and I were also sheltered by friends. While the agents of the king were searching for William in Holland, he had moved back to England to where he, his contacts could be most effective and no one was searching for him there. With William in hiding, Active preparations to move the congregation to the American colonies fell to our deacon, John Carver. With the help of friends in England, Deacon Carver obtained land, a land patent from the London Virginia Company for the group of a religious separatist. In 1620, when the Mayflower was ready to depart, our family was able to come out of hiding and slip into the first group of separatists boarding the Mayflower to go to North America. The voyage on the Mayflower was very difficult. In addition to our sons, Love and Wrestling, who were nine and six, we also took on a four-year-old and an eight-year-old from the Moore family as servants. Both of them died the first winter which made us very happy, very sad. We neared, as we neared the end of the voyage, we were anchored in Cape Cod. A problem arose among the men. We had not landed where our legal con charter was from the Virginia colony. We had no legal right to be in Cape Cod. That meant we had, to pr had no protection from the French or Dutch who were also colonizing America. William felt it was urgent that we put ourselves under the protection of the English crown by deciding and declaring ourselves to be a colony of England. 
we also needed some type of agreement for working together peacefully. The Puritan separatist group and many of the merchants and adventurers also on the voyage had very different interests. Many of the surgeons were under indentured agreements, which might be void if they were no longer under English law. Several people indicated they might leave the group and strike out on their own. William was the only person on the Mayflower who had attended university and had worked as a diplomat. So he set out to start writing up a contract from a political body under the King of England with the potential to write just and, just and equal laws and settle disputes. Ultimately, most of the adult men on the Mayflower signed the document called the Mayflower Compact, agreeing to be under these laws for their own protection. After the signing, the authority of the document was used to elect John Carver as governor of the new colony. Many people died that first terrible winter, but our family was saved. In the spring, we moved into our new house and settled into being members of the new colony. Also in the spring of 1621, we had a celebration of Thanksgiving with our many native friends. The four of us women who survived that winter cooked for it and with the help of the young girls. William continued for many years as elder for the Puritan Separatist Church in Plymouth. Mary Brewster, reenactor, Kay Benson. Technical production, Ann Bell. Background music, Betty Prince.